Welcome back to Jim's Jeeps. Today we're going to be replacing the master cylinder on this 1989 YJ. Stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. On the YJ is an older 80s style, and the early YJs I should say, probably 87 to maybe 90 or so. You'll find this old cast iron GM uh, master cylinder attached to the, to the brake booster on the firewall. Um, it's a great design, it works very well. Uh, this one, however, has developed a few issues. Um, one of them being that it's very rusty and I kind of wanted to replace it anyway. But the cap and so forth, the rubber seal in there is kind of gone. Uh, and, the, and the brake pedal feels mushy. So there, there's really two things going on here. The master cylinder probably still works, at least some high percentage, um, and certainly the vehicle stops okay, but I, I want to replace it. And at the same time, I'm going to show you how to swap out brake fluid and uh, bleed your brake system so that you don't have uh, spongy feeling brakes. You get air in the lines, uh, air compresses more than brake fluid, and it gets, it'll just be a real spongy feeling. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and raise the vehicle up on jack stands on the axle tubes on each of the two axles uh, and pull the wheels off. And You don't really need to do that, but I'm going to do it so I can film it easier and you can see how we can get access both to the wheel cylinders in the back to bleed the brakes and the calipers in the front. And I got a great little tool, a uh, little suction tool that'll, that'll really help a lot and uh, if you're down to one person uh, bleeding your system. Uh, this is a great tool to have. It's not that expensive, and I'll show you show you what that is in a minute. First things first, let's get the vehicle raised up on some jack stands, pull the wheels off, and I'll be right back with you. Seeing the Jeep like this reminds me of a turtle on a post. He knows he's got a problem, but he's not sure how he got there. Let's get the wheels off. Okay, we just cracked two of the nuts there on the brake lines. I have to vacuum out the uh, reservoir here first before we take it any further, otherwise we're gonna have fluid everywhere. You probably wanna have a catch pan underneath or something that keeps all that fluid from dripping down uh, in onto the steering shaft and the, and the frame rail there. Uh, brake fluid, if you get it on paint and stuff, it's actually a very good paint remover, so if you do get it somewhere, uh, make sure you flush it off with plenty of water and uh, so, you know soap and water to, to dilute it and get the, uh, the the effects of the corrosiveness on the paint off. So what I have here is a Mighty Vac. Uh, don't remember the model number of this one particularly. I'll post it in the comments below or in the description below. But this thing's pretty cool. 
it'll allow you to bleed brakes without having a second person. Uh, and the first part is it, it'll come with the suction tube here, which we're gonna draw out the fluid here on the brake reservoir uh, right now. Next thing we'll do is take the cap off the reservoir. It's kind of on there pretty good actually. Set the cap aside. Again, be careful with brake fluid. It's fairly corrosive. We're gonna go ahead and suck this old fluid out. Reminds me, I have a dentist appointment on Friday. All right, so we've already already loosened these lines here. We are going to take the lines off. I can find the right wrench. If the nut is captured somehow because of rust in the brake line, uh, you're gonna have a problem. You definitely wanna get that freed up and do what I did, put some PB Blaster on it, heat it up, and then cool it down with PB Blaster. Uh, and do that cycle four, five, six, eight times until it frees up. It will eventually free up when you break those rust bonds in there and the nut will turn. That's true on the brake side too if you're ever replacing a wheel cylinder or something like that. Just take a little extra time to do that and uh, you'll be in good shape. Okay, the smaller of the two nuts is uh, 7 16 And the larger one was half, I believe. Yeah, half. The mounting nuts in the back are uh, 14 millimeter. So we'll take those off next. That's what mounts the reservoir to the brake booster. The other thing about the reservoir when we get that far is bleeding it. Um, if you don't have any other way to do it with a suction, uh, you need to bench bleed it at least a little bit to get some fluid down in the piston because if you don't you get air trapped in there and it's really really difficult to purge that out because of the way the master cylinder sits uh, on the car on the on the jeep it's it's angled and so you get that little air pocket up in the front here and There'll be just enough air to keep air bubbles going down that line. If you have a suction device, it'll tend to vacuum all that stuff out and you won't have any problems. Okay, so the master cylinder Brake master cylinders removed from the car. Uh, pretty rusty. 
Again, probably in okay shape. I could probably clean this one up and I may keep it uh, on the shelf somewhere. I'm not sure yet, uh, just as a spare. Interestingly enough, inside here is a little push rod and you'll notice it has a adjustable screw on the end of it. Um, that is what sets your, um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, kind of preload on your brake system and how responsive your pedal is to braking. You don't want to tighten that up too tight, but if, you're, if your pedal, even after replacing the cylinder, master cylinder, is still a little squishy, uh, you may need to actually crank this out a little bit to get more pressure pushing on the piston that's actually inside the master cylinder. So uh, take a look at that uh, if you have that problem. When you go to put this back on, you want to put the brake lines on first and then uh, put the cylinder the master cylinder uh, mounting bolts on uh, second. So we'll do that now. To prevent what was happening with the last one, I actually painted this with some uh, Bill Hirsch engine automotive paint, a uh, sponsor. Uh, he makes a great paint. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, that stuff is super, super uh, strong. It stands up with almost anything. Uh, if you're gonna paint an engine block or any engine parts and things like that, I highly recommend it. Anyway, we'll pull the plugs out from the shipping uh, shipping box here. We'll uh, start getting the brake lines on and uh, get this installed. Okay, everything's tightened down. Uh, don't over tighten it, but get it real good and tight. Uh, 
I guess the torque spec is good and tight. The uh, line wrenches I'm using, again, that was 7 16 on the smaller nut, half inch on the front brake line here. Um, definitely use a line wrench. Uh, it, it captures the nut better. You won't, uh, you won't round off the edges. Uh, a regular uh, oak box end wrench, something like that, yeah, it'll work. Um, but if you round off those nuts, I mean, you're going to, you, you know, long run, when you go to take it apart again, you're going to be sorry. So, uh, get, you know, go to Harbor Freight if you just want to get a cheap set. I think they're only like six, seven bucks. And uh, you have them in your toolbox, you'll be ready to go. So let's get this thing filled up. We'll start bleeding the brakes. So I'm going to use this brake fluid here. It's dot three fluid. That's what this application calls for. Um, definitely use new fluid. Don't try and recycle brake fluid. Um, it's what's called hydroscopic. Over a period of time, it absorbs moisture. Uh, and they say you should replace your brake fluid about every four years, uh, if not sooner. I mean, sooner obviously might be better, you know, considering the waste factor, though, you may want to figure that out. Um, but what happens over time is moisture will get in the brake system. Your brake application will be a spongy feel. Um, it'll be real, um, real squishy, almost like you're stepping on a sponge. And that's kind of what's happening is you got water in there. Um, the second thing is the moisture that gets inside the brake system. I mean, this is cast iron. This will rust. Your calipers are cast iron, they'll rust. The piston could get seized in the bore if there's water in there and it sets for a while and it, you know, it'll freeze up. Um, so for all those reasons, kind of like an oil change almost, you want to do it you know, frequently and, and, and do it as proper maintenance. And so we're gonna fill up this reservoir and we'll go ahead and start bleeding. Now I filled this up pretty far because we're going to lose some. We're actually going to pull out the old fluid that's still in the lines and down at the calipers and in the wheel cylinder in the back. Uh, so that's going to take up time, uh, some, some of the extra space. But uh, this fluid will keep checking the reservoir and top it off as we're pulling stuff back out. Okay, so we're back at the right rear, the passenger rear. And uh, I've already loosened the screw just to make sure I could. I used a line wrench on it. Um, and this thing comes with a little suction tube that goes over the bleeder, if I can get it on here. There we go. And you turn on the air. That will suction and we'll open this thing up and we're going to draw the fluid through the brake. And here comes the bad fluid out. You can see it's kind of like a tan or a rusty color. We're going to draw that down so we start seeing some clear fluid come out. Yuck. So we collected about 30 ounces of old brake fluid. And guys, let me tell you, it was disgusting. Orange, rusty colored, uh, thicker, I mean, just absolutely terrible. And um, it was definitely time for a replacement. This fluid was put in about 10 years ago. And um, 
it was time to go. And by the hydroscopicness of the fluid, you can see here in the bottom of the master cylinder and the little ports are these little little ports right here and then right there and those are already starting to rust up um, not so sure I didn't pull some rusty chunks out of there as well um, and you know I should have probably changed the fluid a lot more frequently than I did this Jeep came out of a high humidity area in Florida and um, probably should have paid closer attention to that uh, when I lived down there. So I use this dot three. Uh, I got it at a 32 ounce quart bottle from I think Lowe's it was like six bucks or something like that. Um, yeah, that's a good brand. Um, auto parts stores of course have everything like that too. Um, so change your fluid. Okay, we got the brake cover, uh, the uh, reservoir cover back on here, and the bale put back on the reservoir after I had painted it. Uh, all the brake lines are tightened up. Just gonna make sure they're good and tight. Check for leaks, certainly. Now I'm gonna check the brake pedal. See what kind of see what kind of feel we have now on the brake pedal. I can get up in here. Oh yeah, that's real tight. Feels real good. No brake assist, I mean the engine's not running so I don't have any brake assist, but that feels real solid. I'll get this thing buttoned up. I'll come back and I'll give you a, a post test drive review of, of where we're at. Here it is after the maiden voyage. All is well. Good, good uh, crisp pedal. Uh, again, if you have anything dripping down on anything below, um, make sure you um, get that all squared away. Looks like I have. And the master cylinder is installed. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us today on Jim's Jeeps. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.